But the love of God is not brought only by human messengers in the Quran. Creation itself is a set of messages from God. Hey guys, welcome back to our channel. It's your girl Fanny Lungu back with another reaction video. If you're new to this channel, make sure to give this video a thumbs up, share it with your friends, and of course, do not forget to subscribe. That's the most important thing. Subscribe. Um, other than doing reaction videos, we also have a vlogging channel called Funny and Jesse 2.0, and we have a Patreon called Funny and Jesse, and also have a podcast called Diving In with Funny and Jesse. You can check out all those things. The links are in the description box below. Feel free to suggest whatever you want to see on all these platforms and we'll look into it and may actually and we'll actually do them uh, today i'll be reacting to a very short video titled what is the quran by dr gary wills and i'm excited to see what this video actually holds uh, i mean we've been reacting to islamic things for the longest time and other stuff as well but you may never really it's always good to get a definition from someone else point of view i mean you can watch 20 of these and still get 20 different opinions so yeah without wasting time let's get into the video what is the quran it is a set of seventh century revelations from god made to Muhammad in two cities, Mecca and Medina, in what is now Saudi Arabia. It heralds the truth that there is only one God, not the many gods still being worshipped in ancient Arabia. Of course, this was not the earliest revelation that there is only one God. That had been taught in Hebrew to the Jews and in Greek to the Christians before it was taught to Muslims in Arabic. These three sets of revelation set apart the people of the book, each with their own special covenant from the same God. There is only one. We believers in one God are on the same team, as it were, and should protect one another's places of worship, listed in the Quran as monasteries, churches, synagogues, and mosques, where God's name is much invoked. The Quran does not confine God's action to the formal covenants of religion. God tells us that he sends messages to all men all the time, beginning with Adam, who repented his sin in the garden and became the first prophet. The unending stream of prophets includes Moses and Jesus. Muhammad himself is the seal of the prophets, not as canceling former covenants, but as confirming them. But the love of God is not brought only by human messengers in the Quran. Creation itself is a set of messages from God, which speak a divine code that we are told to decipher. God's intent can be seen in the beauty and power of the universe. Moses does not speak alone on the mountain. The mountain speaks with him. Birds speak to Solomon. The world is constantly signaling to us bringing us insights into the beauty and power of its maker. This should call us to a reverence for God's handiwork, an important message for our ecologically challenged era. The Quran has more of poetry in it than of legislation. It sets ethical norms while stressing the need for mercy in our dealing with God's fellow creatures. Force is allowed only for self-defense, and never as a way of spreading religion. Commercial dealings with fellow Muslims or with non-Muslims should be meticulously fair and never extortionate. The relations of the sexes were still polygamous in the seventh century, as among the ancient Hebrews and the original Mormons, but women are to be honored. In fact, the dowry that was paid to a husband's family by the bride's family in Europe was paid in the Quran directly to the bride, and she retains this bride right even if the husband divorces her or if she divorces him. 
This carved out an area of women's rights unparalleled in the seventh century. The Quran is a book of many levels and great depths. Even non-Muslims can learn from it, as Pope Francis has proclaimed. I am Gary Wills for the Amerstein Center. say it's the shortest videos that have the best messages um, I like how he acknowledges that each religion exists in their own right other than that um, they have their own God not their own God but they call God according to what they believe or what their religion believes which is fine and he acknowledges despite what we call God amongst all these religions at the end of the day there's one god i was having a conversation with my cousin and my mother the other day in the kitchen it started with politics ended up being about religion so my mother confirmed my mother said despite whatever everyone believes at the end of the day even though we disagree with one another or religions disagree with each other there's only one God if we could understand that then the world would be in a better place so I was like oh that's it's good to hear that our parents also understand that fact so getting back to this video that was a very impressive point to start with also I mean like he said that's why I say there is Andrew started with Judaism, Christianity, then Islam. So despite what these two, two religions, these last two religions think, they should, we should also learn from the first religion. If we can learn from the first religion, second religion, then we can actually learn from the third one without being too critical. There's always parts in something that will always speak to you. The first religion should also look into the last two religions. There is always something to learn. There is always first, second and last. There is a reason why there has been that development. So sitting here and saying, ah, I think this religion is the best, doesn't make sense. Religion is religion. That's it. Let's take knowledge from the first religion. Let's look into it and compare it as what's changed. If it makes sense, if the difference makes sense, then why not believe in whatever we're presented with? And also like what he said by saying Muhammad is a prophet that came to confirm that all these other prophets before him were legit. So that should speak volumes to us. Despite the differences, we have so much more in common than we have differences. Otherwise, it was a very, very good video. If I'm missing any points, you guys let me know. Also, feel free to comment whatever you want to comment. And any, every comment is welcome. Let me know what your thoughts are on this video and how he described what the Quran is. And we'll be more than excited to write back to you. Make sure to give this video a thumbs up, share it with your friends. And of course, don't forget to subscribe. And feel free to suggest anything similar to this and will actually do it for you guys so yeah and i'll see you in my next reaction video